There is a mindset that has slowly creeped its way into the minds of moms all around the world. It's a mindset of complacency. What we do every day is hard. Your body is way different. You're relearning everything from routine to relationships to who you even are. And every single day you question if you're capable of being that version of yourself that you picture in your mind, that healthy, productive person, confident that you used to be or want to be, you question that. Well, we're tackling that mindset here at the Tough of Mom podcast with the information and resources that you're looking for to lead a healthy life as a mom, while also giving you the encouragement that you need to keep going. Get ready for the equipping and encouragement you've been looking for. Welcome to the Tough Love Mom Podcast, where you'll get the equipping and encouragement you need to do the hard things that lead to a healthy life. I'm Liz, and I'm a mom just like you. I've struggled in my journey, but I overcame by educating myself and by hearing about moms who had done hard things too. Get ready for the information you want and the motivation you need. You ready, friend? It's tough love time. Okay, friend, you want to win a free, free, yes, free 9 to 9 coaching call with me. Whether you need help figuring out where to start in your journey or what to do to get unstuck from the plateau that you're at, whatever it is, this is your chance to win big. I do not give these away often at all. And it's over a hundred dollars in value for free simply by letting me know what you think of the podcast. How do you do that? Leave a written review. The key is that it's written. So to enter to win, all you have to do is leave a written review. Uh, If you're just tapping the stars, that's not going to do it because I won't know that you left a review. You have to write it out. It's best to do that in Apple podcasts and screenshot that review before you send it in, screenshot it. So I know that you have that, that it's sent in. Sometimes they take some time to process and then either post your screenshot in the tough love mom squad or text it to me at 205-809-7300. That's where I send out tough love texts and just can communicate with you. But that is the best way to send in the screenshot. Again, the tough love mom squad on Facebook or send it to our text messages and you will get entered into the giveaway for a free coaching call with me. Now, the giveaway entries end at midnight, June 30th. They end then. So do it now while you're here listening to the podcast, okay? I cannot, I cannot wait to spend that time with one lucky winner so you can get on the right path in your health journey as a mom. Again, written review, take a screenshot and send it in. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay. I spent a lot of time reflecting throughout the whole first half of this year, uh, things like why I got into the health and fitness space, why I started sharing my journey before even becoming a mom and how that's evolved over time. And the one thing that all of this has been built on since day one is to show you, Hey, if someone like me, who's just like your everyday run of the mill woman, uh, can do X, Y, Z, you can do it too. Because I say this all the time. I'm nothing special. I am just like you. The only difference is my mindset, how I think. And that has been built over time. Um, And all of this actually started with running of all things. I played volleyball in college. And obviously for all the years preceding college, it was my sport. It was my thing. And in college, when we would go train in in the weight training facility, uh, we would warm up usually for a few minutes on a bike or a treadmill or an elliptical. And I avoided the treadmill like it carried the plague (laughs) for real. Um, I was like anti-running. I five minutes of running. No, thanks. I'm not capable of that. And I just truly believed like I was not built for running. I don't know where that belief came from, but I avoided treadmills, running, any of that like the plague. And on a whim, after volleyball, my career ended and I was done with college, I decided to try a sprint triathlon. Um, I loved it. And a sprint triathlon ends with a 5K. So I was like doing some running, right? So I did it. I loved it. And when I crossed that finish line, I was like, I'm going to do an Ironman. Full well knowing that ends with a marathon, 
but I had to get there. So, um, after that sprint triathlon, which is a shorter, it takes you about an hour. I signed up for a couple more and a couple longer ones. And I was training that summer and I had a five mile run on my training calendar. (laughs) So I was at home at, this is actually, I got into triathlons after undergrad before grad school. So I was still in college, but this was the summer between those years. And I told my mom, I was like, Hey, um, I'm supposed to run five miles today. Now, I don't know if I can, mom. So if I don't get back in like an hour, because I was running like nine to 10 minute paces, around 10 minutes, and it was a hot July day. I knew it'd probably take me like 10 minutes a mile. So I'm like, all right, I'll give myself an extra 10 minutes, mom. If I'm not back at the house in an hour, you need to call 911 and then come out looking for me because I've died because I've never ran five miles before. And that I legit believe that. I was like dead serious telling her that statement because I did not know if I could do it. I did not know if I could run five miles. Now I got back from that run after about 50 minutes, I did it. And that was one of many turning points in my belief in myself. And again, less than three years from then, I ended up doing a full Ironman, which yes, ends with 26.2 miles of running. Now I went from deep down, truly believing I am not a runner to knowing with not a doubt in my mind, just a few years later that I would finish an Ironman, including the 26.2 miles of running to finish it. Now I ran and walked that, but I did 26.2 miles when just a few years prior, I truly did not know if my body would physically make it through five miles. Think about that. Now, all of this happened in my pre-mom days, but I am now sitting here almost five years into motherhood, and I have faced handfuls of pivotal moments just like that one. The biggest one, looking back here almost five years in, was when I was postpartum with my firstborn. Um, I did not recognize myself at all. In that pregnancy, I'd gained 90 pounds. I ended up being diagnosed with preeclampsia at just, just under 37 weeks, um, was induced. And I did those first few weeks after birth, lose 40 pounds, 40 to 50 pounds. Um, a lot of that was water weight from the swelling that happened from preeclampsia. Um, some of it was obviously from birth and the baby and everything, but by the time I was cleared, I still had like 40 to 50 pounds to lose to get my body to a healthier place because my body was not healthy carrying around the weight it was still carrying around. And I felt like I was facing Mount Everest. Um, It was intimidating. And I knew I could probably do it, but there were lots of moments of doubt, lots of moments of, I don't look like myself. I don't feel like myself. I can't move my body the way I used to because everything's been moved around and my core is not there anymore. And I was just flabbergasted for lack of a better word. I was like, there were lots of days where I just was like, well, I guess I'll show up today and see what happens. Cause I didn't know what the outcome would be. I didn't know if I could do it. There was that doubt. It wasn't this like severe lack of belief. Like when I truly thought I was not a runner, but it was close and it did not feel good. But after literally just simple consistency over a full year, a full 12 months of time, I did lose those 40 to 50 more pounds and I got pregnant and had a healthy complication free second pregnancy. And so for a while, that's what I focused on sharing because I came to learn there's a lot of moms who do gain more than the Um, suggested amount of weight in pregnancy. I was one of them both times. I gained 60 pounds with my second child, something about boys. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know what it is. Um, But I ended up having an epiphany a few months back after for a while sharing about my pregnancy and weight loss journeys, because like I said, I came to realize a lot of moms were in similar boats that I had been in And it's a really lonely place to feel like, wow, I gained more weight than I was like textbook supposed to. And now I don't feel like myself and I don't recognize myself and I'm learning this whole new role and it's lonely. And so when I started sharing, a lot of moms realized, wow, like I'm not alone in this. And that's so encouraging to see and to hear. And because it was so simple, not easy, 
but simple to lose the weight. It was just consistency in the very simple things in eating well and moving my body. And you know, sleep was what it was those first, those first years postpartum, right? But a few months back, um, earlier this year, because I was about two years postpartum, um, for my second, I had this epiphany where I couldn't, I just couldn't shake the fact that all of this that I'd been doing personally in my own journey and sharing with you guys is so much more than just habits. Where you're at, whether you're wanting to lose weight postpartum, or maybe you're wanting to take on some sort of physical challenge, which I've done handfuls of since having kids like Spartans and these running challenges and just fun things that challenge your body that will push you to your limits. Or maybe you just want to take control of your health. What ties all of us together, even though what we're focusing on is slightly different and what I've focused on at different points in my journey has been slightly different. What ties us all together is a belief thing. We need reminders a lot as moms that we're capable and not just of doing the day-to-day things because you know you can do those since you're doing them every day, right? Like you're proving that to yourself every day. I can get up, I can be a mom, I can feed the kids, I can keep them going, I can change the diapers, we can do this. Like you have, you prove that to yourself day in and day out. It's the other things, right? Because we don't, we don't have any other option with a lot of those, but there's things that we do choose one way or the other. And You need those reminders that you're capable of more than you let yourself believe. And again, maybe it's because of how motherhood changed your body and your routine, or maybe it's because you're trying to be the first in your family to actually lead a healthy life. You've never had that example. So you genuinely don't know if you can do it because you just haven't ever seen it or done it yourself. Whatever it is that you're facing or trying to take on, You have a hard time believing that you can. And I've been there before kids, after kids. It's rough. But I have found that there are two necessary components to building that belief that you are capable and you can do these hard things. The first component is education. Knowledge is power. I don't know who said it. Someone did, someone big and mighty did. But the more you know, the more informed you can be about each and every decision that you make regarding your health, the more powerful that is, the more confident you are in taking this on, right? You're, you're working from a place where you're not just trying keto or intermittent fasting or the next new hot workout program because your sister-in-law said it worked for her. No, you're knowing as much as you can about various topics. And that what that does is equips you to do what is best for you and your health, considering your goals and your circumstances and your family life, all of it, it allows you to personalize all of this stuff that you're soaking in and learning to your own life. So you can do what's best for your body and for your journey and for your family. It is so empowering. And this is just speaking from experience to know what you're doing. And every expert that I bring on come fall and after, whether they're in the field of nutrition, fitness, pelvic floor, mental health, weight loss, time management, whatever it is, they're going to help equip you to confidently take on your journey, to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You're not just doing it because it worked for someone else. You're doing it because you know this, you've been educated on it. You know how it works and why it works and if and how it will work for you. And then you can go apply. So education and equipping is component number one to doing hard things. Again, whether hard is weight loss or taking on something that's going to test your limits or simply taking control of your health and that of your families, these are all hard, but getting educated and equipped is a big piece of doing that. And you're getting that here from the perspective of motherhood. We're not just going to be some like big old health show that brings on all these experts and doesn't give you the lens of motherhood. You will get everything through the lens of being a mom, because that's who we are. And 
the space that we're working from now, the position that you're working from, what's the second component of doing hard things? It's encouragement. Now, I didn't bring this up when I told you the running story earlier where I went from truly thinking I might not make it back from a five mile run to doing an Ironman. But what a huge piece, aside from like training and learning about training and how to train well and how to fuel my body, I, I educated myself on all of that to get to that point. I also leaned really hard into encouraging and inspiring stories. I cannot even begin to tell you how many like motivational triathlon stories I ate up in that season. Okay. I cannot even tell you how many. A few that come to mind are amputees who finished Ironmans, burn victims. There was this father-son duo. Um, the son had a disability, so his father towed in the water and on the bike and pushed him on the runs through multiple Ironmans. These are 140-plus mile triathlons, okay? So his, his grown son, his adult grown son, they did multiple Ironmans. Inspiring. And even an 80-year-old nun who is doing Ironmans, like, come on. These stories just made me go, whoa, like, these people are doing this kind of stuff, and I am a healthy, young, 20-something-year-old. I can do that. If they can, I can too. Every single story that I read or heard helped build my belief that, again, if they can do this, I absolutely can too. No question in my mind. Now, the goal here is not to get you to cross an Ironman finish line. Don't worry. I mean, it can be if you want it to, but they're not for everyone and that's fine. But you do have your own heart. And it's vital that you hear stories of moms who have overcome hard things too. So you're going to hear from moms who have done marathons, Spartan races, or other feats, other physical feats. Well, balancing motherhood, you're going to hear about moms who have gone through hard things emotionally or with their family and how they worked through that and continued to stay healthy through that. You're going to hear from everyone from professional athletes to the mom next door. And they've are, some of them have already been on the podcast. We've had Carrie Walsh Jennings, Olympic gold medalist, um, my best friend who is again, the mom next door, who's ran a marathon and is training for another one. Who's got two little kids close in age. There are so many stories of perseverance, overcoming self-doubt, and finding ways to make it work within the context of their busy lives, and they're going to be here. Those stories will be here on this podcast to inspire you, just like so many stories of other people have done for me. It is vital that you get that encouragement along the way, because that is what will help motivate you to keep going on the days that you're just like, what is this even for? Am I even capable You can hear from me all day long saying, yes, you are, but it's really encouraging to hear it from other people through the stories that are their life. There are moms out there doing hard things every day. And I just want to tell you real quick that you are one of them. It's time you realize that, yes, you are capable. You are doing the hard things and you are getting after it. Don't forget to leave a review to get entered for a chance to win a free coaching call with me. Again, write your review, screenshot it, and send it in. You've got this week to get that done. Cannot wait to help encourage you and equip you on this journey. This is what we're here for. We're here to do hard things. And moms need to be reminded that there are moms just like them doing these hard things. But also, you need that knowledge. You need that education and those resources to be able to do it well. And that's what you're getting here. And I'm so, 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 so excited to bring all of this to you. So again, leave a review, make sure that you send it in if you want an entry into this free coaching call giveaway. And I will chat with you next time, mama. Get after it. Before you go, thank you for spending this time with me on the Tough Love Mom podcast. If this episode encouraged you in any way, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a review, letting me know how this show has impacted you. Then send this episode to another mom friend or take a screenshot, post it on social media and tag me so I can personally thank you for helping me on this journey to impact thousands of moms. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you, sister. Until next time, get after it.